Well, there's a lot of things that are really cool right here. So right off the bat, um, so this this phrase, right, this one that she's doing, very rhythmic, right, very uh, very consonant heavy, and she's using the consonants very well to give this rhythmic performance and rhythmic phrasing. But what is very important to notice is that she's not punching the consonants. And this is important in the context of range and registers. If you punch your consonants, certain ones are going to sabotage your ability to go upwards. And here's what I mean by that. If you hold a T, t, t you're going to feel a pressure build up in your throat. That's not something you want when you're about to go up. So she's being very smart in her low end so that she can go up very easily when it's time for her to go up. It might seem like a small thing, but these things matter. So that, that right there, that's the proof in the pudding right there. So she goes up. Do, 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 right? Do, 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 do. I think that's the one. Anyway, yeah, you can hear that she goes up. And it's smooth as butter. And you don't get to do that if you're punching the consonants. Like. And the other thing that's really cool about when she's going up right there is very, very, very gentle. It's, that takes incredibly little air to go up and, and be that like soft and gentle with the notes. I think a lot of people want to go epic on their high notes. And <laughs> let's not worry about that. We're going to get into some examples of Ariana Grande being epic on her high notes. But the point is, is that she has multiple tools to be expressive with. So she's doing that gently to get to the top. And then that makes the run really, really easy. You, when you're doing runs, you have to thin out your folds. And one of the things that causes the folds to come together in a bigger way is what's called the Bernoulli effect. So if you take two pieces of paper and you blow through those papers, they're going to come together. Vocal folds work in a very similar way. If you use too much breath, they're going to come together very thick, and you're going to have, not only have trouble ascending, but you're going to have trouble moving around really quickly. I mean, you have to remember that for women, the size of the vocal folds is about the size of a dime. So it's, I mean, this is really tricky stuff simple conceptually right like you just use little air you use less air and then you're gonna have an easier time but like you're trying to manipulate something that's the size of a dime it takes a lot of precision a lot of practice easy to say little air much harder to do it okay so um we got a little bit more weight now right just a little bit more weight and we're not doing runs here or she's not doing runs right so she can justify the weight a little bit. And what I like is that it's, it's, um, it's straight tone. It's, it's still a thyroid tilt. So th there's two ways to go up, okay? Three ways. One is bad, <laughs> or like not easy um, and not ideal. So when you go up, you can kind of just raise your larynx and your folds thin and they thin and they thin and they thin and you end up with this kind of sound. Not ideal. The other way to do it is you can tilt one of two cartilages. One is the cricoid cartilage, and that is responsible for belting. And the thyroid cartilage is a little bit more of like what people who do classical or jazz, you know, it's used a lot, and it's used a little bit more ubiquitous than belting. Um, it gives you the vibrato and stuff like that and warms up your tone a lot. Uh, but in this instance, what she's doing is she's doing a thyroid tilt, and then there's just this intentional little bit of tension to keep it straight, and that's okay because she's very gentle with the air. When you're gentle with your air, you can afford to be like inefficient for the sake of expressivity, right? You can actually get away with that. So listen to that, let's listen to that again. Right? Just a little bit of that straight tone tension for that expressivity. It's not terribly high, it's just a little high, so we're fine here. Ooh, okay. Okay, so that higher note there is actually we're starting to use a little belt, okay? Um, and this is, I mean, I keep bringing this point back about air, about very little air. And it, I just feel like it needs to be triple underlined, which is why I bring it up a lot. You cannot belt safely without incredible command of breath. Let's look at it one more time. I want you to pay attention to her torso. She is so relaxed. The posture is great. She tilts her head back a little bit. That actually helps facilitate belting. Um, it makes it easier for the cricoid cartilage to tilt. 
But more important than that is her incredibly loose torso and her excellent posture. The way breath works is it's kind of like a balloon. If I blow up a balloon, and then I press on it, aka torso tension, I'm gonna get more air coming out that balloon, right? It's gonna go from to right? And it'll fly around the room, right? That's too much air. You have that compression. The other thing that can also cause that tension, that compression, that torso tension, right? Is when your posture is not ideal, right? So when your posture is not ideal, it's like poking the balloon or like morphing it in a certain way. The entire torso is responsible for an inhale. It's not just the diaphragm. That's one piece of the puzzle. It's a very important piece of the puzzle, but it's one part. If I do this or this or this, that all affects breath, right? That's a contraction. And so when we look at this with Ariana Grande, she is in, has incredible posture. She has incredible, uh, you know, relax, Asian of the torso that's <laughs> yeah words um but you know yeah so she has all of this going on for her and so the belt that comes out is she has this dynamic control over it and it's really really hard to do that it, it doesn't sound hard but it is <sighs> oh my god um i want you to pay attention to her sense of rhythm okay Listen to where that snare drum is and how she's exactly on it. I mean, she is just right on it. Let's give that a listen. That's called musicianship, folks. You got to have a sense of rhythm, particularly when you're singing pop. I mean, if you go back and listen to Michael Jackson, like all of those little like things that he would do that were rhythmic expressions of the voice, right? So this is this is just you know pop 101 right here. It's incredibly well done. Okay, um, so I talked about that that option of of going up, um, and how you have three options. All right, but nothing says you can't mix and match. Okay, so right there, that's the thyroid cartilage, and then she's also raising her larynx. Why is she doing that? It's very easy. Well, once you understand how to tilt and you can isolate it, it's easy to go like, Hoo, right? That's the thyroid cartilage that's creating that vibrato. Hoo. But if what if I want it to be delicate? Hoo, right? If I lay, if I raise my larynx a little bit, I can get that more nuanced. It's just a subtle way of hitting that note, and it's gentle. And she's doing that right here. Let's. There's a little tilt that's giving that power, just a little bit, but she's also raising larynx a little bit. And that's what gives it that speech-like quality. I had someone come into my Discord, by the way, link for that down below. If you want any vocal help and you can't afford lessons, I totally get it. I keep a Discord for that reason. Uh, I answer questions a lot. Anyway, um, one of the things that came up in the Discord was like, falsetto is not even part like it's not even using the vocal track and and this, you know i'm not making fun of this person they were misinformed and there's a lot of bad information out there um there is nothing wrong with falsetto and it is absolutely part of the vocal track okay what happens what falsetto is is it's your folds flipping upwards so that just the edges are of the folds are are uh, oscillating and making the note happen basically but then you get this hole where that air comes out right Whoo you get that you see it you hear that hiss that's literally air escaping there's nothing wrong with that it's not a it's it's hard to do for a long period of time because it'll dry out your folds countertenors are very impressive because they basically exist in falsetto but it's a lovely sound it's a flute like sound and and she goes up and uses it here and i think it's beautiful like she has a beautiful falsetto and sustaining that on five that takes a lot of good air control right again good posture loose torso sounds easy very hard to pull off and she's doing a great job here Ooh, i love that a lot let's talk about that okay so she goes back into falsetto on five again right and then she goes up now she's adding a little juice when she goes up okay and here's what i mean by that she's mixing so what is a mix? What happens when you mix? Okay, so we have falsetto, which is the folds flipping and doing their things, right? But mixing is this. 
So you can have, Falsetto is not an on or off switch, right? There's a continuum. So you can have your folds fully connected, you can put them apart and have some connection, you know, there's this entire range of motion, right? And so what mixing is, is it's basically, you're creating a little separation and you're still like, you're having some adduction of the folds, some, you know, they're still partly together, right? So she goes from fully, you know, what's that? Abduction, abduction, adduction, abduction, right? So there's the abduction, abduction of the fold, the separating of the folds, okay? And then she does that on five, and then she goes up and gives a little bit more. So she still has this kind of falsetto-y thing, but there's more power here. So let's give that another listen, because it's really cool. And you can hear the little bit of tilt in there, just a little bit, to get that vibrato, and makes it much easier to create that closure. It's really good performance. It's my first time actually listening to Ariana Grande. I'm digging it. <laughs> 